Good evening. Welcome to Expression and Painting with Paul Creamy. I uh, brought in some paintings that I'm working on. This particular painting is going to be the invitation for the cancer support community that I'm having a show in February 10th from 1 to 5 in Norwell, Mass at the DNA Nurses. And it's at 120 Longwood Drive, Norwell, Mass. So I worked on this painting for a good lot of time. There's a lot of detail and a lot of things going on. I love the way the flowers leap off the canvas. So this one here is the invitation for the cancer support community. I'll get it out of the way. The second painting, a friend of mine, oh, that painting there, I had that photograph for 20 years. And I kept looking at it. I must have looked at it about three or four hundred times before I decided to finally paint it. In this particular painting, a friend of mine gave me this photograph 10 years ago. And I kept looking at it. And I said, all of this stuff that's going on, the reflection in the water with the trees, the tree leaning over, the stream, ah, oh, it drove me nuts. And then it has the trees in the water reflection. But I really think that if you look at it, you feel the stream and you feel the fog in the, in the, in the quiet little pond. I love this particular painting. It has such a thrill for me because I know it came out better than the photograph. And I don't want to sound conceited, but I really love this painting. And you should love what you do. Makes a lot of sense. So this is the painting I painted last show. This is the spit. And I said when I was doing it, every time I paint this painting, somebody comes by and buys it. Well, I painted this painting on the last show, and I went back to the studio, and I finished it. I did all of the finish work. I put the seagulls in and put the uh, rocks along the edge here and cleaned up the water. And Next day, somebody walked into the studio with his wife and daughter and said, I love that painting. Where is it? I said, it's a spit, and he bought it. So he's going to pick it up. And I said, don't pick it up until after I show it. So I'm showing it. So tonight, I have another canvas. And like I always do, I start with the black canvas. Here's the black canvas. I like the black canvas. I paint the canvas black myself. I buy them when they're white, and I paint them black. I happen to like what black gesso does for my paints. It enhances the quality of the color. So tonight, we're going to do this particular photograph. It's part of flowers on a sidewalk in Naples, Florida. I already painted this once, and my wife fell in love with it, so I couldn't sell it. It's hers. I gave it to her. And I figured, hey, if she loves it, she deserves to have it, so I gave it to her. So let me put this out of the way, and I'll start. I've got everything set up here. I didn't have my blower this time. So we'll start with uh, the background. And I'm not going to paint those windows in, in the background. I'm going to uh, just block it in and do some weird stuff in the background, hopefully. And when you're doing something like this, don't get nervous. It just happens. I never get upset. Nothing bothers me when I'm painting. I'm in charge. When I was a kid, I saw a show with uh, Johnny Carson, and they had this guy on. And he was the bubble king. And Johnny Carson asked him, well, how do you know when the bubble's done? And he looked at Johnny Carson and said, I am the bubble king. I know. And that's the way you should feel about your painting. You know, when I give a demonstration or when I talk to people, I always say, think that you're going to paint the painting just the way you want it. And go ahead and do it. Get all this water out of the way. I know you're saying, well, if you're going to paint the canvas black, then why are you putting all this color? All this color bleeds through. It works, it works its way through. Somehow it makes a difference. I used to, when I went to the museum school and studied technical painting, I painted everything red, the way the Italians did. And uh, one day, I had a canvas, and I decided I wanted to change it, and I didn't like the painting. And I had a bottle of black gesso, and I said, well, I think I'll paint this canvas 
with this black gesso and start all over again. And when I painted the painting, I loved the effect. And I said, well, that's it. From now on, it's going to be all black gesso. So I'm just getting the background blocked in. I'm trying to use uh, an off-white, and I've got this, because the flowers are purple, and I'm, so I'm, it has a touch of yellow in it, this off-white. And that's going to be the background. And because the, the purple flowers and the greens and everything, I think it'll blend nice. Now, I thought about all of that. I brought 15 or 20 photographs, but that was on the top, and that was the one I planned on painting. So I gave Mr. Ryerson a choice, and he said, I like the one on the top, and I said, good. That's the one I wanted to paint. And so here we are. We're at it. So I want to say hello to Teresa from Pembroke, who said that I should say, this size brush is a size 12 brush. And I'm using, like I said, a, a gesso, and I mix it with the paints, and I use an off-white and a bit of a yellow-white for the background. So that she asked, she sent an email saying that I should tell the size of the brush and uh, the, the, the paint that I'm using. And you know something, because I mix my gesso with the paint, I don't spend a lot of money on paint. I try to get... Uh, middle quality paint instead of getting high-end expensive paints because I feel that it, I mix it with the gesso it changes the quality of the paint rather than spending a ton of money I mean I spend five ninety nine for a tube of paint they had it on sale at Michael's for three for ten dollars you know it's a funny thing you go in to buy the paint there's no paint in the racks drive you crazy so you just got to go with the flow I said to the store manager, hey, you got an ad on, on the paint, three for ten dollars. You don't have any paint. He says, well, you can go to Weymouth or you can go to Plymouth. I says, yeah, but I'm in Hanover, and this is your store. And he didn't say nothing to me. He thought I was kind of a pain. And I thought the whole situation was kind of a pain. Little technical difficulty with the cameras. You know, this is a great situation. We're in the Hanover High School in Hanover, Mass., and, and it's a great facility. They just built this magnificent high school, and the people that are doing this show with us, Colleen, they're fabulous. We were in Pembroke for a few years. We were in Norwell for 20 years. Now we're in Hanover doing the same show. I sometimes think I always should uh, prepare the canvas and then I don't have to go through all of this nonsense. But I want you to see, when you do something like this, what you have to do to do it, to get it ready. If I come with it all prepared, then you don't get to see it and it doesn't really make a difference. But if you're a beginner painter and you say, how does he start this? And what, is, what does he know what he's doing? How does he know what he's doing? Well, you know something? I've been painting since I was seven years old and I'm 69. And you know, every painting for me is a thrill. And being able to paint is a thrill. I get a kick out of these kids. They want to go to art school, but they don't want to do the work. I decided I was going to go to art school and I was going to go to the Boston Museum when I was 12 years old. I started painting when I was seven. And when I was 12 years old, I was already 5'8", and I weighed 127 pounds. Doesn't sound like much, but I went into the museum and I sat at museum school and said, I want to come on Saturdays. I'm a student from Quincy High School and I love your school and I want to come on Saturday. And he says, well, show me your portfolio and then I'll let you know. And so I went home, took the train back to Boston, brought my portfolio, and here I am. I'm, a, I'm 12 years old. 
And I go in, I tell my parents I have to go to the museum school and show the Gene my portfolio. And he said, okay. And he gave me, my father gave me $5, which was a ton of money then, back in the 60s, or the 50s. And I showed the Dean my portfolio, and he said, and how old are you? And I said, I'm old enough. I didn't want to tell him I was 12. I don't know if they had an age limit or not. And he looked at me and smiled. He thought I had a lot of nerve. I probably did have a lot of nerve. OK, so I got this first layer down. And I got my little blower here. Okay. I'm going to dry up some of the background. The funny part is, when I went to the museum school and I was like that age, I went there for about five or six years. And he finally asked me, he said, what grade are you in? <laughs> and I said, I'll be graduating and I'll be coming to your school. And he starts to laugh. You've been coming to my school forever. And I said, well, that's, that's a good thing because I'll be ready when I get here. I love telling stories like that because it, it tells you that you have a, a mindset at an, any age and you, if it's positive and it's directed and it's gonna, you're going to do what you really want to do, you got to go out and do it. Too many people say they want to do something and never get to do it. Like my next thing is I want to go to Ethiopia. I have an Ethiopia priest in my, he's in charge of the prayer group that I go to on Thursday and I am fascinated by his stories about Ethiopia and I want to go see that cathedral at the top of the mountain that they hewed out of volcanic rock. I've got pictures of it and it took my breath away. Well, because I don't know what kind of a challenge that's going to be but I'm going to do it. And I want to come back and then I want to paint my experience in Ethiopia. I did the same thing with Italy and I wound up painting 150 pictures. It took 2,000, 2,000 pictures in Italy. I'm still painting Italian paintings. All right, we got this background pretty much set. So I'm going to start with the painting, hopefully, get it going. We get the technical difficulties straightened out here. All right, you get rid of this big brush, and I'll go to a smaller brush. It doesn't make sense. These, these brushes, they tell you this, that, that each brush company has their own way of numbering and qualifying. They say this is number 22, this brush. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't make sense. All right, we got this beautiful thing. Oh, I got to put a, a little red out. Touch of orange. I didn't put the colors out because I wasn't sure what, what, what picture they were going to pick. Now they've picked it and I should have put a couple other colors out, like for the pot. That's what I'm doing right now. So this photograph, this beautiful flower arrangement in a, in a terracotta pot, and it's all of this background in the sidewalk going to be different.
You really can't even see the pot in the picture. I'm just playing with it, thinking that this is going to be excellent. If you haven't seen Link in the movie, you, you really should. It's excellent. Oh my God, what a movie. What a job. That guy did a fabulous job. All right, there's the pot. And if you're asking, I buy these little foam trays at the dollar store. You get 10 of them for a dollar. And I find that they work as a magnificent palette. And then I put them inside a plastic rubber, rubber mate kind of thing in the airtight and the paint stays forever. Weeks. And it works excellent. All right, let's go and get a little wild and we'll do some of the greenery. It's got a lot of greens. Act like you know what you're doing. I'm going to step back a little, take a look. Oh, nice. I like, I like the position of it. I mean, I've got this photograph, but I'm not going to copy the photograph. I just bought the photograph as a reference. And if you watch me paint, now I've got a little tiny brush. This little tiny brush is probably a three or a four. I should get a little darker green. Let me see if I can... Get a little darker. So if you see the name of the paints, they're basic paints by Liquitex. And they're student quality. I've got a close friend who's always after me to get better quality paints. He says, you're such a good painter that the quality of the paint you use is terrible. That's how she feels. But like I said to you, I have this mentality that I'm mixing the paint with gesso and it changes the quality of the paint. 
So why should I spend all that extra money on better paint? Doesn't make sense. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up the background. This is all the background. All of this stuff that I'm doing is all the background. We'll, we'll do the foreground as we go along. And because I've painted this before, that's why I'm acting like I know what I do, I'm doing. I've painted these kind, kind of pots and flowers hundreds of times. And I like the idea of having all of these marks. They're marks. They're like, they're supposed to be like little leaves, and they're marks. It's like drawing. Painting is drawing with a brush. And the foreground, the, 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 the leaves should be darker. As they get up in here, they should be lighter. And as they get further away, they should be lighter. So that's what. I've got all the dark stuff down here, and that's what I'm doing. So if you want to stick, hey, I got, I'll tell you a funny story. My, I took my daughter-in-law to Braintree today because uh, my son needed to help, her help with some car business. And she was telling me, she has a four-year-old, and, a, and uh, his name is Max. And Max was telling her, I want to go to Papa's studio when I want to start painting. I want to do what Papa does. <laughs> and I said, so that's how it starts. Because my son Christopher bought him a house or a barn or something, and they painted it one of those little things that he puts all his little animals in and stuff. And so he did a lot of the painting on it, and he really loved the idea of pick painting it. So he's telling his mother that he wants to come to the studio and paint. And I think it's great. I mean, my oldest daughter, Ellen, who's a fabulous artist, who's a licensed artist, she started when she was seven. And... Uh, she, she dropped it for a while, and she stopped talking about it, and I just let it go. I never put any pressure on her. And then when she got into the, I don't know, the ninth grade, first year of high school, she said, you know, I think I want to go to art school. Really, in the 10th grade, I think she told me. And I said, well, you need a portfolio. You better start working on it. And she did. And she did an excellent job. She came up with a great portfolio. In fact, when she entered her portfolio in a national talent search, she won a national talent search at Pratt in Brooklyn, New York, and that's where she went to school. I hired a photographer to do the slides. Even though I could do it, I wanted it done professionally because that's how they judge your work. And they called me up and they said, we loved your daughter's portfolio. It had no... She was putting it in for fashion design, and it had no fashion design in the portfolio, and they felt like they could teach her. And she wound up going from fashion design to fashion illustration to straight illustration. And one other major, she graduated with two degrees, illustration and, fas uh, and um, design or something. Okay, we got this background in. Let's just dry it up a little.
probably put a little more on the front because in the photograph you can't even see the, the pot. And right now you see it all. Nice, real nice. Okay, let me take a look. I do have my reducing mirror. Oh. Wow. Let's give the sidewalk a little something so it gives it some dimension. If I can find it. Yeah, black. A lot of artists won't use black. I use black all the time. It doesn't bother me one bit. Drive some of my friends crazy, but I don't mind. All right, there it is, some of the squares. An imaginary line back here. Some structure. Good. Put something here. Might throw some bricks in there. Good. All right, now we'll start to get serious. We'll start doing some of the flowers, so I need a, a brush that I like. I like this one. Let's dry this paint a little more. Thirty minutes. We have really got to move to stop fooling around here and get serious. Good, okay. All right, so what I'm doing is I've mixed blue and uh, a shade of purple in gesso to mix this color 
of the flowers. I want them a little darker. You see how I act like I know what I'm doing? That's part of the painting. Always act like you know what you're doing, even when you look at a photograph. And don't let the photograph scare you. If you don't, don't let the photograph scare you, you can paint the painting. So I'm just putting in, blocking in the colors of the flowers, and then I'm going to go in and do the de detail later. And like I said, as you get higher, the color gets lighter, add more gesso. And if you look at the photograph, it has a lot of green without any flowers up there around the ground. See how much fun I'm having? This is really a terrific painting. It's going to be really nice when it's done. I just got to set it up. step back and there's somebody out there saying they don't look like flowers they look like blobs well they may to look like blobs now but they won't as we get further into this painting as we start to do the detail See, I'm not trying to teach you how to paint as much as I'm trying to teach you how to see. Seeing is the whole key to doing great painting. I see where I'm going, and I'm going here. That's the key. I look at the photograph, and I'm looking at it intensely, and I'm saying, okay, this is what you've got to do and you go and do it. And you don't hesitate, because you're in charge. It's your painting. And this side of the canvas, this side is where the light's coming from. This is the darker side. So you see how it's darker in here, and this is a little lighter? That's, I mean, I'm doing that subconsciously, but I should tell you why I'm doing it, so that you understand it. Now you start to see it take shape, it start to have form. I've got it all blocked in now. Now I want to take my time, so let me just dab this stuff on, and, and then I'll go back and get the smaller brush, and I'll do the little tiny strokes that really make it look like these are real cool flowers. As I know, you people that are watching this show all over the world, because I posted on my Facebook, Always feel comfortable with what you're doing. You know, just, just know that you are in charge of it and you're going to feel comfortable and it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. And I'm at an advantage because I've painted this particular kind of painting a whole lot of times.
So we keep dabbing away. We keep putting these dabs of color on. We take a look through my reducing mirror, see how I'm doing. Oh my God, I'm loving it. It's really starting to take shape. I'm going to go to the smaller brush. Let me dry some of this. This is how I work in my studio. No matter how long the painting takes, I work layer after layer and I put the blower on, I shut the blower off, I go sit in my rocking chair, I look. I spend more time sitting in my rocking chair than I do in front of the canvas. I have a great rocking chair. A Mission Oak Stensley rocking chair that I paid quite a similar of money for 50 years ago. And it's been with me ever since. I've moved it eight or nine times. Go take a look. I'm going to go sit in the chair here and sit down for a second and take a look. I know we're running out of time. We've got like 20 minutes. I did a pretty good job with those squares on the ground. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Nice. They look good for just zipping across. The background's nice. I think the pot could be a little darker, but this is the kind of thing you work along and you work with as you go along. So I want to make the pot a little darker, I'll make the pot a little darker. How do you make the pot a little darker? You take the black and you mix it with the paint and you make it a little darker. This side especially. See, one thing about painting is that you're in charge. And you're going to make the decisions as you go along. And you can't be mansy-pansy about making your decisions. I don't think my wife would ever be a painter. She can't make a decision quick enough. You know? She'd kill me if you ever heard me say that, but it's true. Artists make decisions all the time when they're painting. You have to. You have to decide, well, if the pot's not dark enough. I want the pot to be darker. Then you just go ahead and make it darker. It may not be perfect until I get into it, but this is what I wanted to do. Make the pot a little darker, so I made it darker. So I'm going in and I'm lightening up this side. This is the lightest side. I'm gonna dry the pot. I 
may not finish this, but that's all right. I'll put it aside until the next time, and we'll work on it again. But I spent so much time bragging about all of the things you've got to do to do that it got a little behind, but I'll catch up. If somebody will come along and they'll say to me, oh my God, I love your painting. What kind of flowers are those? I have no clue. I don't. I really don't. Oh my God. I said they're purple flowers. I don't get into it with my head. I just paint. I, I see something I like. I photographed this paint, uh, particular photograph, and, and it was in Naples, Florida, and I had a show there in, uh, in the gallery on 9th Street a few years back. Beautiful gallery. But see, the flowers, now, this is when it takes, you got to take your time and do the little dip, 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 dip. And you, you, st you, you start framing each one. Great. We're never going to finish this tonight. When, when, I never expect to finish these paintings anyway. I always think, sometimes I'm lucky and I can get pretty good in it and get into it. You know, an hour is not a lot of time. So this is really a sketch. But I'm going to really go after it and see if, how much we can get done. What happens when you start going after it and you get serious, you stop talking, and then your people get lost? What I'm doing is I'm adding a little more white to make it brighter on this side. I know as it dries, it's going to get lighter. But right now, it's a little dark, so I'm just going to dab away until I get where I feel comfortable. Like this plant right down here. Let's make these... And let's get really creative and we'll put, in the photograph there's a bunch of these little things on the, on the ground like that. But I didn't want to do all of that stuff. That's the end. That's the frosting on the cake. I got to do the sidewalk somewhat. I just, just because I put a few lines in doesn't mean it's done.
This is how you do it. This is how I do it. I, I keep dabbing and dabbing and, and painting and, and then sometimes I'll put 25, 30 layers on top of these things until they're where I want them to be. So they're actually jumping off the canvas and you really, you can almost feel them. But you can see how this side's so much lighter and that's what I want. I want the lighter on this side of the canvas so I keep adding lighter and lighter colors and mixing the paint so that they stay light. Nice, it's getting there. And when I come back, like I'm going to save this for next time. When I come back and do it next time, I'll, I'll finish all the greens, I'll finish the background, we'll finish the foreground. But got to be a realistic and, and just keep punching away until we run out of time. I'm going to tell you something. The easiest paintings are the hardest ones to do. <laughs> no matter how many times I paint them, they, re they, they feel so easy. I, oh, I could do that in no time. And it always, the ones that I think are the hardest, I bang them right out. Well, maybe I concentrate more. They're hard, more of an effort. You know, and I do usually come with the idea that I'm going to paint a certain painting. But tonight I came when I wasn't quite sure. And so I had the uh, young man pick the painting. And he did a good job because I put the one I wanted on top. And he picked it. So that worked out. Let me get back and take a look. Whew! This sure is a lot of flowers, huh? Boy. So if we're overwhelmed by the flowers, we we'll dry it a little and throw in some green. And as I dry it, you'll see how much the flowers will come alive. So we'll, this will be number six and a half and number seven when we finish it. I, I spent a little too much time showing off the other paintings. But I really like the other paintings. So when, when you have so many flowers and you see you're overwhelmed, nothing's overwhelming, nothing. All you do is get some of your dark green, mix a little black with it, get it even darker. Start throwing in some of the stems, some of the flower, I mean some of the green, and it changes it.
So painting is not being afraid to put paint on the canvas and just go after it because it'll, it'll always come out. You can always fix it. You can always change it. You can always make it better. I'm just dabbing this stuff around because I still have to do some of the interesting stuff back there. But you start to see a change again. See now? And then you go back and you add some more to the flowers. So we started with this photograph. And it's a stack of flowers in this pot. And, and, and I haven't put any of the detail in. This is still really blocking it in. The detail is making each one of those flowers come alive. I might have to do that the next show. But let me see if I can do a few of them and you can get the idea. I might get so excited having to sit, sit around the studio that <laughs> I might finish it and you won't get to see it. That's another thing that might happen too. I'll try to control myself. I thought I'd do that with the beach scene and I wound up painting it out. You, know. you guys didn't get to see it finished. You got to see it completed, but the process. But it was pretty much controlled by the time I left. It was, I had a lot of it done. Wow, this went really fast tonight. You know, the, the best shows always go the fastest. Let me just take out some of the moisture in this. All right, I have this little photograph of a pot of flowers on the f ground in Naples, Florida. Here's the fo uh, photograph. And what I tried to do tonight is give you that feeling of the pot of flowers. And if you look at it, the flowers are really starting to take shape. I haven't got in there and done the final detail. There's so much shaping and molding, but little tiny dabs. But you can see that this side is a lot lighter 
and this side's a little darker, and you got the dark part, and there's going to be some stuff on the ground, and I'm going to fix the background a little next time, when I, if I don't do it at the studio, if I do it here. And that's how I paint. And it, people will say to me, do you paint like that all the time? Yes, that's how I paint. I attack the canvas, I have an attitude that I'm going to do it, and I'm going to finish it, and I keep working, 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 and I'll go sit in my rocket chair, look at it for a while, get up and go work at it. Those other two paintings I showed you with the, with the trees and then the birch trees, I worked three weeks on that one painting, and then I worked two and a half weeks on the other. And I never stopped every day. I couldn't wait to get up in the morning, get to the studio to work on them. And this kind of a painting here, it has a freedom. And you feel like it's busting out of the pot. And that's what I would try to achieve tonight, that show you the energy that you can put into a painting. That's what expression in painting is all about. God bless and good night.